sitting here with uh, Johnny Watkin, our former uh, youth director here from Southampton Town United. Um, you know, big time favorite of a lot of our players. And uh, I've had the privilege to coach Johnny uh, in college as well. And then we worked together, you know, with uh, Southampton Town United. So welcome, Johnny. You're the first guy here in our blue and white episodes. Uh, Brilliant. Thank you. Very Barry. happy to have you. How are you feeling, Johnny? Yeah, I'm feeling a little bit nervous about the questions you might ask, but now very excited and obviously it's great to see see you. I haven't seen you for a couple of years and hopefully um, be able to stay in touch with a lot of the Southampton Soccer Club family as I have done over the past couple of years, but hopefully this message will reach a few more as well. So yeah, it's good to, good to see you. Yeah, we're going to kind of keep it PG. So, uh, you know, well, uh, first off, you know, we're going to start these series and you're the first guy mm -hmm. to uh, to be on. So hopefully we can work through all the kinks and stuff. But to start, you know, I wanted to talk a little bit about your background in soccer, how you got started. You know, obviously you're from England, but if you can tell us a little bit more about your background there uh, yeah. before you made a move over to the States. Yeah, I think my, my playing career as a, as a kid uh, started actually really, really late considering in the UK. A lot, of, a lot of youngsters start kicking footballs around like five, six years old. I didn't start playing until I was 10. Uh, I had no interest in it whatsoever. And it's quite funny I have uncles that play professionally and grandfathers and uh, family members that are so invested in football um, and I, I didn't start playing until I was 10 years old um, but obviously as soon as I started playing it was just as you can imagine like all my heroes back then wanted to be just like them um, and then I think I started playing at sort of a higher level when I got to age 14, 15 when I started representing um, the, my county at South Yorkshire uh, which is like a region for New York, if that makes sense. Um, and then from there, was, I was fortunate enough to spend six months with Rotherham United um, Academy, which is a professional football club in England. It's actually my, my, my boyhood club that I support. So that was quite a, a fun experience. But being, being sort of five foot three, I always knew coming up to that 16, 17 year old when the pro contracts and youth contracts start getting rolled out. I always knew that were, that would kind of hold me back a little bit, particularly in men's football, if that makes sense, at 16. So at 16, I didn't quite get a contract with Rotherham, but I, I managed to continue my education and play for Thomas Rotherham College, which is 16 to 18 is like high school for the US, but over here we call that college. Um, and I ended up playing for the academy system there, which was also linked with Rotherham United at the time. And then from there... I was very fortunate enough to be put forth to um, trial with England Schools Football Association. So I was one of, I think, about a thousand that were put forth to go down to Kent for like a big trial weekend. I was there for four days. Uh, and then I think I was one of two from South Yorkshire, from the region that went to represent South Yorkshire and ended up getting to the last 32 in the country. Uh, and I remember we, we had different trial dates throughout the country, throughout the year. And there was at places like Aston Villa's training ground at Birmingham, at Leeds United, at Derby County, some big, big time um, academy clubs. So I had some great experiences playing there. But again, I made it to the last 32. To me, that was an unbelievable achievement. I knew that, you know, football, I was never going to make it as a pro footballer. I was quite realistic with myself with that. Um, but from that, that experience there, it almost kind of fueled that fire inside me again to want to keep playing. And then... While I was at Thomas Robin College, my coach at the time um, had actually played out in the US at Hofstra University and had suggested to me while I was studying that I should potentially start contacting coaches to go over to maybe try and obtain a, an athletic scholarship to play, to continue playing and study out in the US, which at the time, which was what, 10 years ago now, actually 10 years ago, it wasn't really, really popular. And I didn't know anyone that had ever done it uh, from my, my area or anything like that. Um, but yeah, I was fortunate enough to then go to on a, on a tour to New York with Thomas Robin College, where I played out in Massachusetts at Burns Park at Met Oval. Now, I think you were supposed to come and watch me in Met Oval, but never made it. <laughs> um, and then on my last day there, while we were playing with Thomas Rotherham, the, the coach from Hofstra, which was Richard Nuttall at the time, I think it still is Richie, um, he wanted to meet with me for breakfast and discuss like sort of potential opportunity to come over and play. And that was in the summer, July of 2010. And then in August of 2010, I moved over to the US and started my first journey, so to speak, in, in, in US soil with football and soccer. Um, and that in itself was a, was a massive learning curve. Because, you know, 
uh, well, as you know, I'm not sure if many of us know that I had a bit of a difficult time playing there. Um, you know, as a, as a youngster at 18, playing with lads from all over the world who are 22, 23 years old, not really getting too much playing time, getting off the bench, not really scoring many goals or really performing that well. And then after one semester at Hofstra, um, ended up transferring to CW Post, which is then LRU Post uh, at the time, where I met you in the spring. Uh, and then from there, sort of the rest is history. We, we had a, a few, three or four great years together, both playing and coaching. So, right. Yeah. Yeah, experience. that's quite the journey, Johnny. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's funny to listen back to it. You know, obviously, we just said we spent three seasons together uh, when you were playing at Post, and then you stayed on and you became the assistant coach for a while as well. Um, mm-hmm. And got some quite some accolades too, some, you know, all regional uh, championship, and then on your own individual, got an All American nod as well. Yeah, I think, I think we're quite um, fortunate at that time the recruiting class that came in in, this, in the fall of 20, 2011, I believe it was. So many great players. And then from there, we, we kind of really, really built a quality squad. And from that, having a quality squad and depth and so many good international and American players, I think we, we did really well. We ranked number one in the country for a while, went to national tournament for the first time in, in a while in the, in the program's history, held our own on the East Coast. And obviously, with wins, you then when the East Coast Conference becomes like a no-brainer that that's what we're going to win each year then it went to regions and then hope trying to strive that national championship that never quite happened but you know a lot with that I was fortunate enough to, to be honoured as a, a first team All-American selection Scholar All-America in 2013 so yeah I mean that goes you know that, that's some of the, the good memories but that's all down to kind of the team that I played with and uh, being around so many great players to allow those opportunities to happen. So, <laughs> yeah, well, you're humble as always. Uh, you know, hopefully, <laughs> we can get some footage here to show your fans over some goals as well. Yeah, uh, there aren't too many, but <laughs> <laughs> so from then, uh, from from then making a move from CW Post as a player into the coaching ranks, and then you uh, ended up coming out to Southampton, spending some yeah. time here working with the club. Uh, become a first as a as a youth coach trainer and then eventually being the director of youth development. Um, yeah. Tell me about that. Yeah, absolutely. So when I graduated from post after I did my 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 major in physical education, I always wanted to be a PE teacher. I wanted to go into education system. Um, but alongside that, um, obviously that love for football and soccer was always there, and I managed to to get a position at the CDCH school in in. Um, What's it called? Where the Stephen Hans East Hampton. Hampton. East Hampton. Yeah, East Hampton. Yeah, East Hampton, that's the one. Um, and alongside that, I managed to obviously work with yourself at, at CSG and Southampton Soccer Club to, to really, really build the club. And I think when I first came out, there was, I don't think there were too many teams, so to speak, but that's kind of grew over the years and summer camps got bigger and then we added more and more youth, youth um, teams from like 06, 07 boys and they grew and grew and grew and that, the club got really, really big, and I'm sure they're continuing with the success that we we tried to build over the years. Yeah, for sure. Um, but yeah, my, I, my, you know, my passion's always been football. It always will be. It's always ingrained in me, you know. And I'll, I'll always have a love for it. And 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 at that time, having the opportunity to work with youth players and great families in a little community was absolutely fantastic because everyone buys into what you're doing, uh, and you can see when they take when the kids kind of take what they're learning on a Tuesday and Thursday night, then progress to JV and Varsity at the high school and you watch them play over there and you see what you're creating with them, put into practice in a, in a really, really competitive environment. It's so humbling, the experience. Um, but yeah, absolutely love my time at Southampton Soccer Club. Uh, absolutely brilliant. Last yeah, time. I know a lot of players they have a lot of love for you too. If you think back, you know, favourite memories, you know, that you can think of. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, there's two really, really distinct memories that stick out in my mind. Uh, the first one's a bit of a heartbreak one. Um, we were with the 2000, the 2002 uh, Sharks team, I believe it yes, was. Yes, yes, we, yes. Yeah, and we'd gone to play with a, we'd gone to play in the in the league where we travelled basically all over the place, Brooklyn, upstate. And this is a, this is not a great memory. It's actually a poor memory. But we were in the semi-finals of the of the league or cup, and we were playing at Southampton High School, and we were we were one one for the whole game, and it went to extra time to overtime, and we were defending, 
and some the other team had shot and I remember Parker West had covered his body like this and it hit him in, in, in the arms, which you know and I know that, that <laughs> would be ball, but the referee gave it and gave a penalty and we ended up losing on that penalty. <laughs> And that, that memory will always stick with me just because of the pure heartbreak you could see in the boy's face at the end of that. Right. That's, for some reason, always stuck with me because they were so resilient all game and battled so hard just to be let down by something like that, which is one yeah, of those I remember things. that game as well. Well, good news if you don't know, keeping up with Parker West is he has committed to Mercer yeah. Marine Academy to play soccer there too. So I'm Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, touch Parker. Parker. Yeah, that's quality. Um, and then my other memory is, comes with the girls... 2000 and there must be 2005 no three, three, two, three 2003 yeah, yeah. Um, and it was a season where I just took over from Gary after after he coached him for such a long time and we'd gone to I think we'd just started on 11 aside it might be the second year in 11 aside and the season actually I think we went undefeated and the, the football we were playing at the time was absolutely absolutely amazing and we're working on so many things in training of, of sort of resilience and working together and how to move the ball together as a team. And this particular memory started from a goal kick and Kendra played the ball out to Sarah at right back, which for the first time all season, I think you were there watching it as well and commenting, <laughs> but for the first time all season, they'd actually been brave enough to do it. And Sarah then played the ball into the middle to Caroline Henke. He got set back to Caroline Lust, who played a long ball up to Carly up top. We then set it back to the other midfielder, which must have been uh, Isabel, uh, I forgot the last name. Palumbo. Palumbo, yeah, who played the ball out to Halle Beek on the left, who then slipped in Ellie Avalone and she whipped it into the top corner. <laughs> I thought that was the most complete goal I've ever seen in my life and it was brilliant. And it is kind of those moments there that make you really, really love what you're doing and working with the team. And not just the team, but the families that are watching. And yeah, it's just a great memory. And yeah, no, it's awesome. I, I was there for that, you know. I think, yeah, you know, I was telling you, your <laughs> master coach, after watching mm -hmm. that, uh, yeah. and you know, like that that team, that girls team, they're still together. Gary took over again, and they're doing really right. well. And a couple of That's girls awesome. are looking now to go on and go to college, and some of them have made the ODP team. And you know, it's Not team that, that the girls have really developed, and they play a really nice style of soccer that you know you implemented and have done a really good job and Gary now continued but it's a great group of girls like you mentioned yeah absolutely I think that that's kind of across the board for the club you know the culture that and this is why I was so passionate about working for Southampton Soccer Club and yourself is the culture that we created amongst most teams if not all teams was that buy-in to to, it's, you're not just football players or soccer players for us. It, it's our little, it's our project, it's our family. And that's what made it so good. And that's why there's so many great memories and so many, even the losses weren't as always devastating because of kind of the heart and resilience that a lot of kids showed up on a Saturday, Sunday morning and just gave everything they have, you know? And it was, uh, again, a brilliant, absolutely amazing. Yeah, that's awesome, Johnny. Well, one of my favorites from you was actually that happened last summer, you know? And it's when you came and, and they made an appearance at the Gutsia Cup in Sweden, of course, yeah, and, yeah. You know, we were fortunate to bring you know our academy teams over there, and especially then uh, the 05 and 06 groups and 03 boys as well. That you kind of worked across all those three age mm -hmm. groups, and uh, you know to see the pure joy on on the players there. You showed up uh, with the 05. I think we had a playoff game <laughs> yeah. there. And yeah, I actually ended up taking over the, the warm up there, but to, to yeah. set the tone and the boys were so thrilled to see you. Um, and, you know, that, that's one of my favorite memories just to, to look at the players when they see you walk on the field and the love that they showed for you. Yeah, and that, again, that was very humbling. A lot of hairs on my neck standing up on that one. Especially when telling guys get come on out of the car park, let's go back onto the field, you know. Yeah, and I say half the yeah. team are probably taller than you now at the moment as well. Oh yeah. I remember <laughs> hugging um um at uh is it Javi? Yeah. yeah, I was on my tiptoes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Moose, yeah, not too worried. So, <laughs> yeah, no, it's great. Uh, very cool. Uh, all right, so to, to move on, I'm checking in my notes here. Um, what's your involvement with the game today, and is there any? Yeah, so <clears throat> prior to finishing with, with Southampton, obviously, I moved back to the UK in 2018, um, and I knew at that point that after my coaching experience with Southampton with LA Post at college, uh, that so I'd, I'd hit my pinnacle and I hit my peak of, of coaching football and playing football. And I knew that I'm kind of knocking on now. Um, 
so I never wanted to go go on and then coach something different because in the UK the system's very different it's very I don't know how to describe it like I talked about the family with Southampton and that sort of intricateness of being cloaked it's not really like that over here it's very different and I didn't really want to want to continue coaching so I would never get that same experience that we had at, at Southampton so I kind of drew the line with coaching football at soccer at, at that time um, however I do still play um, keeping the dream alive uh, <laughs> playing around uh, what we call step six in in UK football so in the hierarchy of football you've got the Premier League at the top Championship League One League Two then get split and then the, the, the leagues kind of get wider and wider you go down and playing at what we call a semi-professional level uh, step six where there's Bits and bobs and money involved with playing is very competitive. Um, you know, each stadium's got 250 seats, etc. So it, it's good. Um, it's different. I can't move like I used to move. So it's frustrating, <laughs> to say the least. Uh, but I think I've probably got a season or two left in me. And then that'll kind of be it in terms of football. But as you know, um, I always wanted to be involved in education and teaching. So my love for working with, with young young adults, young students, well, that was always going to be there. And that's what I do for a living now. Um, I'm somewhat involved with the Futsal Academy and, and Football Academy at the college where I work at the moment. Not too much. It's kind of kind of drop down, do some S&C sessions with the young athletes that are like 16, 17 years old that try and push them on to, to different areas after college. Um, and then in terms of sort of scholarship works, I've been through the process. I work with a lot of our young athletes at college who are, who are students are looking to go out to the US, whether that be in, in football and soccer or whether it be in something different like hockey or tennis. I kind of help them with that scholarship process oh, and right. speaking to coaches. So, yeah. Cool. Well, this has been awesome, Johnny. It's been great to talk to you. Uh, before I kind of let you go, uh, is there anything that you want to tell, you know, the, your fans here at Southampton or your former players? Uh, yeah. Or the advice, um, encouragement or any, any, any love? Yeah, firstly, I absolutely miss you all and I'll never get those feelings back of coaching you and, and being around you. So keep that, keep that family orientated vibe going at Southampton. It's very unique. Um, and second to that, just keep being resilient like we used to teach you on the, on the field. You have to keep working hard no matter what and, and all the good things that you're hoping for in life, they'll happen to you if you work hard, absolutely. So. Awesome. And then uh, remember, you promised that you were going to come over here and guest coach one summer. I mean, with all the stuff going on at the moment, I think this summer might be out. But in summer of 2021, we're expecting you back here in the uh, Flying Point Park. Absolutely. Pencil me and I'll be there. <laughs> all right. Thanks, Johnny. Appreciate it. Have a good one. Thanks, Greg. Take care. Bye-bye.